Hey everyone, my name is Jing Nick. I'm with Zero Networks, and I'm going to show you a brief overview of micro segmentation and Zero Networks' approach to helping organizations segment their network. So, I'm going to show you some animations as well as some demos in this video. So, let's get started. So, before I go into micro segmentation, I did want to level set and talk about, you know, historically, what's been going on for most organizations and this not might be your organization exactly but some of these pieces might fit into your um historically what you've done when you've made your journey through the cloud but what we're seeing is we have a lot of you know let's say you have a on-premise environment and you've got a perimeter firewall you've got some network segments like workstation servers and some iot devices and you've segment this and you know use that perimeter firewall to kind of control access from one segment to another. And we have these remote workers that may not be connected to the company data. They may be from home. And in order to give them access, you would have a VPN server. Then you started building some uh, vendors started building these cloud services and the, you know, these SaaS offerings, which is basically what they call software as a service. And made it easier to leverage these services without actually having to manage the infrastructure on premise. And also we see the organizations start shifting their, you know, their server assets into the cloud. So they don't actually have to manage the, you know, the physical server environment on premise. So if you notice your network perimeter has changed, now you've got to protect your, you know, your machines, and your host endpoints everywhere, you know, remotely, on premise, and in the cloud. This is very challenging. And that's why we're talking about zero trust and talking about, you know, different approaches to protecting against this. But network segmentation is not enough. Uh, what we're noticing is if a server downloads um, some software update, some supply chain attack that occurs, what happens is it'll scan for open ports. That malware will scan for open ports. And once it finds a port, it'll start, you know, running CV vulnerabilities against that port, so these common ports. And then the, um, that malware can move laterally within the organization. So the protection is only at that network perimeter. That's it. And once you compromise an endpoint in this network perimeter, most cases, every host in that network segment you know, basically trust each other. And now you can move laterally because those ports are open to you, right? So protection is only at the perimeter. Lateral movement can still occur from host to host. There's still an implicit trust between these hosts in the network segment, okay? So if you think about the ransomware attack and that previous diagram, if the adversary gains access to a remote endpoint because they clicked on the bad email, you know, they're that low hanging fruit that you now, they move laterally to that VPN connection, they start compromising workstations, the IoT devices, servers. And if you have that site-to-site -site VPN um, with well, maybe some rough segmentation, you start moving laterally in the cloud. So how do you protect against this, right? Many vendors have prescribed their own solutions, but it, it, it always kinds of aligns with the products they're trying to sell, right? And so sort of that's one reason uh, I left Microsoft and went to Zero Networks is because Zero Networks had a very unique approach. And what their philosophy was or their methodology aligns with sort of stuff I built at home. Like I built a lot of scripts to do a lot of what Zero Networks does, but now Zero Networks provides a service and can help organizations do this automatically for them. So let me tell you Zero Networks approach to automatic micro segmentation. So we run a SaaS service in the cloud and this service allows us to take control of the host firewalls, right? So we want to automate this. We want to manage it for you and we want to scale. And you're probably wondering, you know, how do we manage every single host firewall rules? Well, you're going to deploy a trust server so that we can manage these hosts and we do it via WinRM. So the trust server really just allows access for us to manage these hosts via WinRM. We have some secret sauce to actually hook into the firewall and manage those firewall events and also get the firewall events uh, as well. So we use it to get the firewall events, those block events, and we also use it to 
uh, configure those host firewall rules on the on those boxes. So let me talk about the learning. When we're learning the traffic, we're actually grouping them into three buckets. Uh, we use what we call automatic and deterministic traffic categorization. So we use some AI, some ML, some secret sauce to learn all this traffic and group it into three buckets. Client to server traffic is basically, you know, when a, you know, when a user is going to a server and they're going on a certain port like HTTP or HTTPS, these are sort of the common ports that we want to learn. Uh, we only want to keep traffic between the servers and the clients so they aren't interrupted. You know, so once we flip into protection, we're not going to impact the users. The server to server traffic is very important because, you know, we want to learn that this particular server, right, are talking to the database so that uh, we can kind of understand what's going on there. And then the most important traffic is going to be the privilege ports. This is the most important because administrators like these ports, like SSH, WinRM, PSExec, uh, anything to manage these devices, adversaries also love to leverage as well because they could try to, you know, uh, brute force, you know, a password, or they could try to run the, uh, you know, some CVE vulnerabilities against these common ports and use this to move laterally within organizations. So here's the goal. We want to... Um, protect these ports by default, meaning just block it by default. So all 65,536 ports, we want to close by default and only open the ports we allow, right? So we want to follow that block by default and only selectively open the ports. And we do that because we're learning for two weeks, okay? So let's say that once we're done learning and we're ready to start shifting these assets into protection, which it doesn't have to be two weeks. If you want it to be a month, we could do that as well. Once we start the learning, I'm sorry, finish learning, we're gonna flip it to protection. This is when we're configuring the Windows firewall on every machine. So it's not a agent you install. We're actually configuring the Windows firewall on these boxes. And for Linux, it would be IP tables, okay? And so you can imagine it says, okay, uh, let's just apply and configure those rules. So, you know, Zero Networks will basically manage all the firewall rules for you, the configuration, and we do it very fast. And we're using the, uh, the OS firewall. So we don't actually have to install our own agent. So that's why this is going to be a different approach than maybe you've seen before. Now, what happens? for these IoT assets, like these assets that cannot protect itself. Well, the metaphor I kind of like to use is a parent child, where the, ch the IoT asset is, is an asset that can't protect itself, but a protected asset could, um, you can configure an outbound firewall rule to block access to an IoT asset, right? And apply a, what we call like a just-in-time MFA approval process and say that, you know, if they want to access this uh, IoT asset, we're configuring that outbound host firewall rule on that device. And then say that, you know, in order to access the device, you know, you're going to have to MFA. Vice versa, if you are on IoT asset and you were to compromise it, right? An example could be, uh, I think we heard about a fish sensor in a casino. In order for those assets would be blocked at a host level. So even if you're on the same network segment, the host firewall rules would inhibit you from logging into this box. You wouldn't even see a port open, right, at a layer four. So let's talk about a situation where our trust servers has no connectivity or visibility to that remote worker. You know, maybe you don't even have a VPN server to, you know, that we can push group policies to. And in those situations, then of course, then you're going to need an agent. We're going to install an agent on these remote devices so they could be Azure AD joined. But, you know, if there's no, if our trust servers can't reach it, then you, you're going to have to install an agent. Okay. And then, but we'll actually manage the devices and those agents will actually just talk directly to the cloud. So now, if you think about all those ports are closed, let's talk about a situation where you do want to open up a port. Let's say an admin wants to RDP to a port. Well, it's blocked by default, but we're going to get that block event, right? Once we get that block event, we're going to match an MFA policy for that administrator group and then trigger a just-in-time MFA approval. And this M MFA approval is more contextual. This is approving that says, hey, 
I want to access, you know, this device wants to access the, maybe a firewall or something or a port or a web page or a GUI, doesn't matter. Once you approve it, uh, now we will open up that port for one hour, two hours, four hours, right? And once that uh, firewall rule expires, then we'll just remove it. Simple as that. So now when the av administrator leaves for the day, right, and he goes to sleep, and, you know, an adversary that has, uh, you know, owned this machine you know, at 12 a.m. wouldn't be able to move laterally because those ports are closed. He would need to MFA to even open up that port because it's the host firewall. It's not, you know, like a perimeter firewall, right? So let's talk about that same attack, right? Remember, we have a machine, download a software update, it gets compromised. We can't control that because that's AV, that's your endpoint protection, right? But what we can do is inhibit that lateral movement from a machine to another machine. So you can protect against reconnaissance scans, you can protect against lateral movement, block against vulnerable ports, right? You can pass pen test because we're blocking this at layer four on the host machine using the Windows OS firewall, right? How do you move laterally if the ports are closed? Does that make sense? So I know you wanna see a demo, so let me show you real briefly what this looks like. I have a Guacamole jump server. It's a browser-based jump server, okay? And I'm just gonna do a scan, okay? And I'm gonna scan from my on-premise box that is protected by zero networks. If you look here, what do you see? Nothing, there are no ports open. There are no ports open from that jump server's view. But how do you RDP? Well, if I go to my administrator portal and I go to my edit and I look at for uh, 33 to nine. So this means that I have a rule said my jump server can go to my destination assets, all right, on port 33 to nine, it is disabled. So what do I need to do? I need to turn this on. If I press save, it's gonna be quick. So I'm gonna press save and I'm still talking. I'm gonna go to guacamole and I'm gonna go scan again, right? There's no editing here. Uh, and look, that port, my friends, is now open. That's how fast we can configure these host firewall rules. 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, we can figure it for all machines if it's a protected device that the jump service should log into. And you can scope this out by group, maybe administrative groups in your you know, AD policies, whatever. Uh, this is how fast it is. So one of the next parts uh, that I wanna show you is if you think about the, one of the zero trust principles of always verify, let's say you do want to you know, put some MFA on top of this, right? Verify the assets, remember, if you authenticate with the IDP, that's just verifying and authenticating and getting authorization of accessing, you know, whatever you need to access. But there's gonna be another MFA you're gonna to need to do where it says this machine can only access this box, which is so that we can put a firewall rule in. So imagine that now I have access to that on-premise server. So I'm gonna to go to my on-premise box. And uh, let's say I wanna go to my PFSense firewall. I, I'm using this to protect my home network firewall. But now I want to access my PSN's firewall. And if you see this, I'm blocked. And then you're probably wondering, wow, well, how do you, you know, uh, how do you, uh, you know, open up that port? Well, I get a, a browser based prompt that I could approve this on a, you know, on the PC, PC I'm logged into. But even better yet, if you've got Duo, we can do a Duo push. So let me actually airplay and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen, my, my iPhone here, I'm gonna pull up my little dual prompt. And as you can see, it's the same one. I need to access that PFSense firewall. I'm gonna hit approve. Once I approve that access, and I go back on my on-premise box, if I try to approve this, I've already approved on dual, so it's expired. But let's refresh this page. And now I can access the portal. So let's say I have access to the portal, but I wanna, I want to SSH, right? Like I want to SSH to the uh, box. Does that mean the portal port is a different port than SSH? SSH is 22. This portal is on 8443. So let's say I want to SSH. 
well, that might be another type of authentication. And maybe you want to put MFA on, you know, SSHing into a port, right? So let me just SSH as well to that same port. I'm blocked, but I'm going to do it with the browser this time because uh, you've already seen the duo. But as you can see, I'm going to prove it here. And just like that, I've got access. Huh? I mean, that's pretty cool. And I would love to dive deeper, uh, POC, demo with you and help you understand this more. I mean, think about it. 65,536 ports block it by default, host to host on the same network. You shouldn't trust them, right? And on top of that, let's block those privileged ports by default. And if you want to access it, they wouldn't be able to see the port, but we would get the firewall block event and then trigger another approval process saying, should this user on this machine connect to this server on SSH or RDP? And if you approve, a temporary allow rule should be added and then removed later, right? So that the adversary, if they get compromised, or I'm sorry, if the machine gets compromised, the adversary would have to MFA to open up that port. He wouldn't see anything, right? It's just a really good concept, a really unique approach. So let us know what you think. Uh, please comment, please subscribe. I'm going to be posting more videos around micro segmentation about zero networks, and um, you'll start seeing some more videos um, coming down the pipeline. All right. So have a good day, everyone, and stay safe.